Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us remotely. I am Marita Luke, Business Development Manager for the School Construction and the Environment, and I am pleased to be your moderator for the next 50 minutes. Just a quick reminder that this session will be recorded. If you have questions, please type them in the Q&A. We have an amazing program advisors to help us out there. Before we start, I would like to first acknowledge the BCIT's five campuses are located on the unceded tra traditional territories of the Coast Salish nations. Now, we have a lot to cover. Make sure you have a pen and paper handy. Here's our agenda. We have an amazing panel to give an overview of their programs, and after that, we, we will have a Q&A. Now, let's begin. It is with pleasure that I introduce to you Dr. Brett Favaro. He is our newly appointed Associate Dean of Natural Resources and Environment. Brett may be new at BCIT, but he is a longtime champion in the environment industry. He brings more than a decade of experience as a conservation researcher and educator with academia and industry to support the sustainable management of natural resources. Brett. All right, thank you, Marita. So my name is Brett Favero, and I'm the, as uh, Marita said, I'm the Associate Dean of Natural Resources and the Environment. And I'm here to warmly welcome you to this evening's big info session on applied and natural sciences. What you're gonna to experience tonight is a brief introduction to some of the programs and opportunities available at BCIT. Before we get into any of those details, it's worth asking, why pursue a career in science at all? And why start that career with training at BCIT? The fact of the matter is that we live in complicated times. We're online right now as opposed to in person because it's not safe due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Likewise, those of, us, those of us in Southern British Columbia couldn't go outside a few weeks ago because of wildfire smoke caused largely by climate change, which itself is caused by humanity's use of fossil fuels. Our fisheries struggle and the integrity of the ecosystems that we all depend on continues to decline. But all of these intersecting challenges have a common thread. The solutions to them depend on people with a deep understanding of natural and applied science. And all of those challenges will shape the types of jobs that graduates will expect to do here in BC and all across Canada. Here at BCIT, the institution deeply understands the importance of training graduates that are competitive for the jobs of today, but equally important is to look ahead and understand what skill sets they will need to be successful in the jobs of the near future as well. We understand that graduates need to be employed, but they also need to be positioned to make a difference. And this mindset is woven into the DNA of this institution and guides the choices that we make as we're designing and offering programming across all the schools. Tonight, you'll get a brief introduction to some of the natural and applied science offerings across the Institute. And this is just the first step. Many programs will have additional info sessions and our faculty and staff are always ready to take questions and help guide you on your understanding of what BCIT has to offer. I hope you enjoy the presentations and that they spark your interest to take the first step in your new career. Thank you. Wow, thank you for your inspirational welcome remarks, Brett. Here is a very brief, um, next slide. Here is a very brief sector overview, which Brett touched on. As you can see, it is hard to capture every program in this overview. So our speakers here will be able to give you more ideas for your future career path. Next slide. During these challenging times, the majority of our programs will be offered fully remotely, while those that require on-campus learning will be offered in a blended delivery mode. Note, for the in-person portion, we've implemented all the required safety protocols like physical distancing, barriers, PPE, enhanced hygiene, much smaller classes, and dedicated tools and equipment. Next slide, thanks. BCIT is comprised of several schools and sectors. Tonight, you will hear from these four schools. As mentioned, we have a rep from each school, Marco Vitzik, Marketing Coordinator for School of Energy, David McKay, Program Head for Forensic Science from School of Co Computing and Academic Studies, Jeff Otto, Cadet Coordinator, BCIT Marine Campus for School of Transportation, and me from School of Construction and the Environment. First up is our one and only Marco Vishik. He is a familiar face at Big Info, 
being online in four sectors. Take it away, Marco. Thanks so much, Marita. I appreciate it. I hope everybody can hear me well. Next slide, please. Um, I just have one program under this particular umbrella, and that program is the Chemical and Environmental Technology Program. Um, this is a program where students learn the latest chemical analysis techniques along with environmental science, process engineering, and materials technology with environmental protection in mind. It is a, a program that is uh, for people who like science, care about progress with sustainability, and enjoy investigating problems, and can make a difference in the world. Um, chemical and environmental technology is a big part of everyday life and most industrial processes. It is a combination of science theory with hands-on practical applications, as we all know BCIT's education is. Um, and if graduates want to continue into a degree, they may bridge into a BTEC program at BCIT or transfer into university uh, for a science or engineering degree. This is a two-year diploma program, common first year for both options and two second-year options being analytical science and process engineering. Analytical uh, would be of interest to those students who enjoy an increased emphasis on in instrumental laboratory analysis, organic chemistry, environmental regulations, and science. Process engineering, um, it's more of an interest for people who enjoy an increased emphasis on chemical and biochemical processes and more in-depth introduction to engineering principles and design software. Careers in this particular field um, really can um, be pursued in any kind of setting, laboratory, consulting, industrial, or research. Job outlooks are excellent uh, with great demands and, and skilled graduates. Great demand for the skilled graduates, I should say, sorry. Um, with the analytical, you're looking at key uh, Sampling of air, liquid, and solid materials, so you can uh, imagine those kind of jobs. Uh, on the process side, it's, um, there's keys to sustainable, sustainability making and recycling of products like paper, plastics, metals, fuels, food, and pharmaceuticals. Uh, uh, really, the people that come out of this program are well positioned to work in emerging green industries, uh, such as biofuel, hydrogen, and fuel cell technologies. Um, how is this, sorry, if this is one of the programs that you're looking at uh, wanting to revisit, we are hosting a program information session. It is going to be on October the 13th at 6 p.m. That is really my summa summation for you on chemical and environmental. If you do have any questions, please feel free to enter them in the box and we'll answer that at the end of the day. Pass it back to you, Marita. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Marco. So as Marco says, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A and also take note of the program specific info sessions. If you miss anything, don't worry. I have a slide at the end to show you the link. And also next, we have, are pleased to have David McKay, program head, Forensic Sciences from School Computing and Academic Studies. Thanks, Marita. Ah, forensics. So it's not quite what you see on TV, but it's uh, still a very interesting and rewarding career. Um, we find that there's always a shortage of what we call a good forensic investigator, which is basically the application of science to investigations. So, you know, if you have an interest in trying to determine why something happened, like an accident, or who did it, like a crime, um, our, our, our forensic science program may be for you. Um, next so slide, please. Uh, we offer an advanced certificate in forensic investigation and a Bachelor of Technology in forensic investigation as well. Um, there are many different areas and jobs within the world of forensic science from a coroner to investigates how and why a person died you could be a scientist that works in a forensics lab, or you could be a social media investigator working for ICBC to uncover uh, fraudulent accident claims. So there's a lot of different uh, opportunities and pathways that our students take. Um, one of the nice things about our program is it's part-time. So once we are back to in, in, in class uh, sessions, 
our, our courses happen at night and on the weekends, so you can still work a regular job and, and get a, an education as well. Um, as far as program entry, um, in order to apply for an advanced certificate or a Bachelor of Technology program, you, you need to have completed at least 60 credits of post-secondary education before entering our program, uh, as we don't have any direct entry from high school. Um, our students, um, once they graduate, they'll work in law enforcement, uh, forensic labs for different provincial investigation agencies, insurance companies, uh, private investigators, uh, security companies, uh, and, and things of that nature. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we also have, a, this is something new that we've just launched in the last couple of years, a new credential with UBC. It's a combined honors program in biochemistry and forensic science. You complete your first year in biochemistry at UBC, and then you have uh, years two and four, which are done equally between BCIT, or BCIT forensics and UBC. Uh, and this is a great program if you're interested in a career as a forensic lab scientist. So, um, if any of this is uh, of interest to you or you have further question, questions, uh, I'm going to put a link up in the chat uh, regarding an info session that we have coming up on Forensic Science on October 14th uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. And we'll really dive into what Forensics is, uh, what our program is all about, and some of the career opportunities that are out there. Uh, so again, thank you for listening, uh, and I will be hanging around in the chat if you have any further questions. Hey, thank you, David. Again, um, feel free to use the Q&A. And um, our next special guest is Jeff Otto, Cadet Coordinator for BCIT Marine Campus. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Jeff Otto. I'm the Cadet Coordinator at the BCIT Marine Campus. Um, I salute all of you for checking out some of the very interesting um, programs at BCIT. Every time I hear these presentations, I realize how many there really are. And uh, I like to think that we have a very special one at the School of Transportation and the Nautical Sciences program. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as you can see, the Nautical Sciences program really teaches people how to drive ships, bottom line, um, and all the skills that go along with operating any commercial vessel uh, of any size anywhere in the world. Uh, the picture that you see is one of our graduates, Ben Swarey, who's a captain with BC Ferries, who basically uh, took the program with us. Uh, so a Nautical Sciences officer would be the person who's on the bridge of the ship who aspires to become the captain of that ship uh, and navigates that vessel safely from one position to another. Uh, the other focuses that they look at are loading and offloading cargo, and of course collision avoidance, making sure that uh, two ships don't occupy the same point in the ocean at the same time. Uh, they're also required to look after all aspects of ship safety and passenger safety as well too. So they really are the people who are keeping their eyes out the window, looking on the horizon and making sure that the ship safely goes from A to B. Uh, next slide please. Uh, before any of our students go out on sea phase, uh, they basically have to learn all the aspects of firefighting, shipboard firefighting, uh, because when they're on a ship at sea, they basically form part of the fire department. Also, survival craft is a big component of uh, safety training that uh, students would have before they go out and do some of their time aboard ships. And also, Marine Advanced First Aid is another, another skill uh, on the Marine Emergency Duty front as well. Later on in the training, they would do advanced firefighting, where they become the leaders of the TAC teams to make sure sure that uh, the vessels are safe and they, they focus on aspects of leadership and teamwork because as a, as a ship's officer you really are becoming uh, the leader of that vessel. Uh, next slide please. At the Marine Campus we are blessed with having a plethora of um, resources to support the training and as you can see on the right one of our recent graduates is in one of our tug simulators where uh, the officers would learn all the aspects of, of navigation. Um, it's better to practice different conditions of navigation in a simulator um, where you can basically break electrons and not break ships or not spill anything into the environment. Uh, you can learn your you learn how to how to navigate and, and manipulate a ship, maneuver a vessel um, in this environment uh, under the, the guidance of our instructors. Other aspects of training include electronic chart display, radio training. Um, and of course, academic courses that focus on things like astro navigation, uh, ship stability as well. Um, so there are some academic courses that go along with the, the program that would require higher levels of math and physics. And that's kind of what we're looking for in, in applicants to the program. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, so the upshot of the whole training is basically to become uh, a ship's captain of, like I said, a commercial vessels of any any size anywhere in the world. Um, pictured here is a ship with Algoma Central Corporation where we just sent out um, a handful of our, our deck cadets to do some of their training, which is an essential part of the program. Uh, the program is four years in length with three sea phases, so students would serve on vessels like this um, anywhere in the world kind of thing. So that's the kind of license that we try to train you up in um, and hopefully get you out there and, and seeing the world. And with that, uh, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll be around uh, in the question and answer period as well, too. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Jeff. Um, great job there. And I feel like I want to get on one of those boats, too. Um, now it's my turn for the School of Construction and the Environment. And your final speaker, woohoo! How many of you love the outdoors and the environment? The next few programs will be of your interest. Next slide. The two-year full-time fish, wildlife, and recreation diploma program, or FWR for short, for short, is for people interested in careers in the conservation and management of fish, wildlife, parks, and outdoor recreation. This highly regarded program is celebrating its 50th year. The program is designed to give you a broad range, broad range of applied skills, experiences, and knowledge. You'll spend a lot of time outside, yes, field trips, where you will learn to identify, inventory, and monitor BC's fish and wildlife species and habitats they use. You will also learn how parks and protected areas are established, designed, and managed. Upon completion, you will re be ready to work in the dynamic and diverse field of resource management. Grads of this program are eligible to register for professional designation of a registered biology technologist or RB tech with the College of Applied Biology of British Columbia. Sorry, that was a mouthful. Now they're having an info session on October 27th and it's filling very fast. So make sure you register for that one too. Next slide. Again, if you're passionate about working outdoors, you may also want to consider the two year full-time forest and natural areas management diploma or FNAM for short. Lots of acronyms, acronyms here. The program gives you a strong foundation in geology, earth sciences, mapping, surveying, and measurements. You'll learn skills and training in silviculture, forestry, inventory, engineering, fire and forest health management, and urban forestry. And you will have skills in the management of trees, invasive species, and soil resources. Graduates work for the municipal, region, regional, provincial, and federal governments, the environmental consulting sector, and various nature, natural resource industry sectors. One cool thing about this program is you may work full-time or on a seasonal basis. As a natural resource field technologist, you can work anywhere in BC or beyond and be paid to explore nature by hiking, driving 4x4s and ATVs, boating or flying in planes or helicopters. This sure sounds fun to me. Or you may work as a natural area technologist in a city if a more urban setting is your preference. So um, definitely with the increasing turning to low carbon wood products, like you see like in mass timber or in construction, you can see this is a great area to be in. Wood is definitely good. Next slide. Now, did you know the United Nations designated the 2020s as the decade of ecological restoration because of the urgent need to repair degraded ecosystems? I didn't know about that, my colleagues told me, so I think it's pretty cool to know that. So BCIT's Billings um, Bachelor of Science and Master of Science programs in ecological restoration provide grads with a world-class foundation in fundamental science, applied knowledge, and technical skills needed to restore a broad range of degraded ecosystems. The Bachelor of Science degree is a two-year program, years three and four, and is one of just two Canadian Bachelor of Science programs in ecological restoration. Good to note is that both FWR and FNAM that I spoke of previously, they provide the perfect background to go into this program. Other program programs also may qualify as well. And the Master of Science program in Can is Canada's only graduate program specializing in ecological restoration. 
and is offered jointly between BCIT and SFU. So in both of the programs, students work with many professionals on a wide range of applied restoration projects. Grads of both programs have an excellent track record of securing great jobs with consulting companies and nonprofit organizations, as well as government. There is a current shortage of qualified restoration biologists and practitioners. So if you're interested, make sure you register for the Ecological Restoration Programs in Info Session on October 27th, coming up. Next slide. Now, there's a lot of programs on here, but I'll try to summarize them as fast as I can. Um, the part-time or full-time environmental engineering program is one of the first Bachelor of Technology degrees at BCIT. As a full-time program, the two-year program is similar to years three and four of a degree. Uh, Marco's uh, Chemical Environmental Technology program is a perfect program to take before this one as well, too. And then taking the this program part-time is an option as well. It's great for people to work part-time, work full-time and take this program. The program gives additional skills and knowledge that engineers and science grads require to successfully work on in, uh, environmental assignments such as sustainability management, air quality, climate change, environmental impact assessment, and more. The fully online part-time self-guided advanced certificate in building controls and energy management, BCEM for short, this was developed in partnership with industry to meet the growing need for individuals with both energy management and building controls expertise. The aim of this program is to supply industry with graduates who can use controls and building automation systems to improve energy efficiency. This includes integration of this, this knowledge in all phases of a building's life. This info session is on October 14th. The fully online part-time self-guided advanced certificate in community energy management spans traditional silos of current and long-range planning, policy operations, engineering, transportation, finance, and others. This interdisciplinary sequence of six online courses provides a unique opportunity to refresh disciplines that you already are familiar with. And then through seeing them through the lens while introducing new tools and concepts. It's having an info session on October 19th as well. And last but not least in this group here, the fully online part-time self-guided Sustainable Energy Management Associate Certificate Program. This was developed in partnership with BC Hydro, Fortis BC, and BCIT with some funding from Natural Resources Canada. This program is designed to support employment opportunities in the field of sustainable energy management. The target audience for this program are those that are inter interested in expanding their knowledge and initiatives into sustainable energy management or interested in changing careers. So all of these are very awesome um, options for you. The info session for CMAC is on October 14th and it is getting full. Thank you, next slide. So I'm not sure if you know, but GIS is everywhere. It really is. In fact, for big info, it falls under engineering, computing, and here in applied natural sciences. But in real life, GIS is used in environmental management, land use planning, engineering, natural resource management, transportation, real estate, utilities, business and marketing, mineral exploration, health and social services. It, it is a special kind of computer information system that integrates spatial data with, with database and to solve real world problems. You learn how to design and build databases. Um, so if this is something you like, definitely database building is what GIS is all about. The advanced certificate in GIS is designed for a person with a full-time career, like they might be an um, engineer or urban planner or retail analyst who needs to add some GIS knowledge to their existing skill set, but not be a major component of their job. After its completion, there's an opportunity to take the Advanced Diploma or the Bachelor of Technology. The Advanced Diploma is aimed at university or college grads who seek an intensive technical education that will prepare them for a career in GIS. The Bachelor of Technology in GIS covers the same courses 
as the advanced diploma with the additional studies in management and liberal arts and includes a GIS work experience. The RGIS courses can be completed in either full-time or part-time format. All part-time courses are available through online learning. learning. And next slide, geomatics. Geomatics is the art and science of measuring, storing, managing, and presenting of geospatial data. It has a rich history of an exciting future where rapidly changing technologies apply directly to the sustainable management of the world's resources. Geomatics consists of a wide range of topics, including something I know you're all familiar with, GPS technology, field surveying, drones, cartography, geodesy, land use planning, photogrammetry, hydro hydrography, and cadastral studies. I had to practice pronouncing those terms. The BCIT Geomatics Engineering Technology Program offers a two-year diploma in geomatics with the choice of either pursuing a career in geomatics or continuing further to finish the Bachelor of Science in Geomatics. Geomatics attracts students with an interest in math, computers, earth sciences, and there's opportunities often outdoors, but many students select from a wide variety of career paths. They're having an info session on October 29th, so don't miss out on that one. And just to let you know, oh, thanks, next slide. Um, we've got two more slides to go. The Associate Certificate in Industrial Wood Processing. This was a special program we designed to prepare program um, graduates with the knowledge and critical thinking and technical skills to advance to supervisory positions within their current organizations in the North American lumber sector. The program is, value, is a valuable component of an onboarding strategy for new employees with a background in industrial wood processing. At this point in time, the courses are not available on a one-off basis. They are delivered sequentially as part of an associate certificate. And the participants are new or existing employees in the North American lumber sector and are sponsored by their employer. So if you know of an employer that's interested in sponsoring this, let us know and we can set this program up for you. And last slide for me, the mining products are also everywhere too. Welcome to the exciting field of mineral exploration and mining engineering. Students have the flexibility of preparing for careers as mineral exploration and mining technologists or as mining and mineral resource engineers. Our two-year mineral exploration and mining technology program provides a path to registration as a technologist. And our four-year mining and mineral exploration degree program builds on its 50-year track record of offering the mineral exploration mining diploma, as well as industry-relevant engineering and trades programs. And it leads to a path as a professional engineer. This is a recent um, accreditation, so we're very excited. Skills gained in these programs will give you, um, get, help you solve a wide range of technical problems in diverse mineral industry settings. So register also for this info session on October 28. Whew. Now I can take a breath. That wraps up our School of Construction and the Environment programs. And here are ways to learn more about applied natural sciences that we talked about. And if you would like to connect with me, Marco, David, or Jeff, just send us a note in the chat and someone can respond with our email address. And as mentioned, here's that link I um, talked about where you can find the upcoming program specific info sessions, not only from applied natural sciences, but from all the other sectors as well. Some info sessions have space limitations, so sign up as soon as you can, okay? And I think, um, I ended early, so, so, so now, on behalf of our team, um, I'd like to thank the program advisors for assisting us on the Q&A, and um, now we can actually help you answer some questions, possibly live, um, and I think, if, I think our team, if you feel um, okay with it, you can actually ask the question out loud for all of us to answer. Oh, is there a program offered by BCIT that prepares someone for being a soil tester? Uh, yeah, we do have some programs. For example, in uh, I think with 
environmental engineering technology and with civil engineering, um, there is some soil testing. And um, you definitely do some soil testing in the forest and natural areas management too. Oh, um, I think, Jeff, there's a, someone who would like an email for the nautical officer program. Yes, we're going to be running an information session on the 27th of October uh, from 5 to 6 p.m. I think someone was asking about the UBC BCIT Forensic Science Transfer Program. Uh, again, we're going to have an info session on October 14th, 2020. Um, and also, you can email uh, Jason Moore, who's the program coordinator for the, the program as well. And his email is jason underscore more at bcit.ca. I'll throw that uh, email address up in the chat for you as well too. Hey, thanks David, thanks Jeff. Great, I did see a question. I think it's been answered, but it just might be a, a good question to ask live and that was, what what was the what is the opening day for applications for September 2021 program entry? Um, and I don't know if uh, one of the program advisors is available to announce that live, or but I believe it was October 1st that the application process uh, opened for next September. Correct? I think you're right. I think I'm right as well, but I just <laughs> thought it might be a, a good uh, reminder that that's one of the reasons why we are doing this info session at this time, because we are supporting the fact that the applications are ready to be accepted. So, Yeah, and just to jump in on that, uh, most programs, uh, applications did open October 1st. Um, some programs, they do have specific um, application dates and they will be outlined under the program entry page but for most programs October 1st was the opening date. Thank you Zara. I see a question about the fish wildlife program ideal for applying for to BC parks. Yes definitely that's a perfect program for that one as well as the forest and natural areas management. And Marita there was a question here that just asked about applications for part-time BCIT programs um, that start that begin in January and April and can they still apply um, and and for those part-time BCIT programs absolutely you can definitely apply right up until they basically start um, <laughs> so I hope that answered the question live <laughs> <laughs> thanks Marco yeah I do have a, uh, a question here that I see that I think is uh, a great question to ask and a uh, great one to answer live. It says, um, I haven't been to school in over 20 years. Are these programs for anyone? And uh, I think uh, the correct answer is yes. It's yes. never too late to re-educate. I agree. Thanks, Marco. Oh, I see something for uh, David. Uh, David, do you see the question here? Where can we find more information about UBC BCIT Forensic Science Transfer Program? Yes, I um, I did uh, put up some contact information um, regarding that that program. Uh, they can contact Jason Moore. Um, and again, we're having an info session on October fourteenth, um, where we're going to get into that that great program. And for, further to what Marco said, there's another question about mature students that are looking for retraining. I think that's one of the things that BCAT, BCAT does a really good job of, um, is you know if you're looking for a career transition or getting into a new, a new field, um, BCIT is really good for that. Uh, all our programs are, are geared, I, I think, you know, in many cases for people that might be working, need to um, upgrade or are looking for a career transition as well. Thanks, David. I, I saw that one again and I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. I saw a good question that um, everyone might want to see. It's called, um, due to the new quarter system in high school, some students won't be finishing certain courses at the time for deadline. deadline. So my question is, how can these students apply for the program before the deadline? And it looks like 
we'll be using grade 11 final grades as a proof of registration in grade 12. So just I share that with everybody. Uh, I think my final slide is the thank you. On behalf of BCIT, thank you all for taking time out of your schedules to join us today. Um, it's one of my first times moderating in this kind of mode, so it's been kind of a, a, a little fun and a little stressful. <laughs> and we hope you found this session helpful. We hope to see you virtually or in person taking a program at BCIT.